So what's the difference between um, opaque paints, watercolour paints, and transparent watercolour paints? The basic difference is, is the fact that uh, the chalkiness of opaque paints is it's apparent when you put it over something like this, a dark mark. I've just used a black felt marker here. Um, and this top colour here is a colour called Bismuth Yellow um, by Winsor & Newton. And uh, that's a single pass of the uh, brush. So it's just, it was just a brush loaded with this colour, a single pass over this black line. And as you can see, it, um, it covers the black really well. Now, this is a transparent yellow, so I've used two yellows here. Um, despite this looking, this is a colour called Indian Yellow. It's of an orangey type sort of hue, but it's um, it's a transparent yellow effectively, and the more you thin it out, the more yellow it goes. But as you can hopefully see here in this demonstration, um, let me just go in a bit closer here. So there we are, that should be a bit clearer. So you can see that this opaque uh, yellow really covers the black quite easily. Now that was also a single pass of the brush and you can see it doesn't cover anywhere near um, as uh, it, 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 it doesn't block out the black line if you like that's underneath and I went over the black line here several times with the transparent yellow, the Indian yellow and really struggled to cover the black line. So it's a visual thing, it, and it's something we must get used to recognising as soon as we look at our paints when they're on the paper. Now, of course, the shortcut to this is to simply read the manufacturer's instructions or label, uh, and most uh, reputable manufacturers will tell you the uh, degree of opacity or transparent. It's often used as... Uh, used uh, they often use, sorry, a simple symbol on the label. Could be a little square or a circle. Um, and um, I know with the um, the Winsor Newton um, brands, the colour is um, they use a little sort of square. You might not be able to see that, but there's a little square on the back of this tube. And uh, in this case, it is a transparent colour, so they leave the square blank. Now, if that was a black square, it would suggest that the colour was opaque. Um, if it had, if it was half black, half trans, uh, half clear, it would be semi-transparent or semi-opaque, if you like. Um, so, but that that just tells you that it's transparent, opaque. We actually need. Uh, a practical, um, physical sort of example that our eyes can pick up and get used to seeing, to become familiar to. Um, th another way of checking whether your paints are opaque or transparent is simply by taking the top off. Now, opaque paints, let me just show you the, um, probably a better example if I show you the bismuth yellow here. So we just look down the neck of a tube, it's straight directly into the paint, you can see how chalky it looks. Most most opaque paints will appear very light in tonal value, um, and it's simply because of the amount of white pigment that's added to the to the colour pigment uh, to keep these opaque. Anybody working in um, gouache, of course, will be very familiar with uh, with 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 very opaque paints because that's what gouache paints are. Watercolour based, uh, sorry, water-based paints um, with a lot of white. The, 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 they use various different uh, supplementary pigments, um, sometimes chalk, talc, um, even marble dust and stuff like this has been used in, in paints to make them opaque um, over the years. So if we look then at the transparent version of the yellow, you can see how much darker that looks compared to the opaque yellow. And if you were to go to something like, um, there's a, a transparent burnt sienna. Most burnt siennas will be transparent. Um, 
and I'm just looking for the symbol on the label on this particular brand um, and it is there and it's referring to this as semi-transparent um, different manufacturers will offer um, degrees of transparency in some of their colors um, and the particularly the earth colors that's the siennas and the umbers um, you'll find that um, they're often semi-transparent or semi-opaque but the more they lean towards transparent the darker the paint will look in in the tube like this so that's the explanation of you know um, of how to tell whether a paint is opaque or transparent or not but as I say that that's not reading the label taking the the the, the top off to view the color of the paint inside the tube is one thing but it doesn't really tell you how to use it and that's what I'm going to explain next why would we favor transparent colors over opaque colors there's one last point I want to make before I go into that and that is um, what happens with transparent colors uh, compared to what happens on the paper with opaque colors quite simply the the, the simple sort of physics of it are that um, opaque colors they don't allow light through so um, one of the reasons why watercolor transparent watercolors are so uh, popular and favored so high so much is because transparent colors what's actually happening is the light is traveling down and hitting the white of the paper and it's able to travel through a transparent color think of a transparent color as a bit like a cellophane a colored cellophane a colored polythene sheet or plastic sheet it's transparent light can get through it and it reflects the white of the paper back at you um, which gives it that luminosity um, whereas the opaque color actually stops the light doesn't allow light through so you're not seeing the white of the paper bounce back at you um, so I'm going to show you just a couple of examples here of um, very simple very crude um, small paintings that I prepared uh, for you here um, demonstrating um, what these if w w what these effects are when you when you stick to one over the other if you prefer opaque paints to a, a tra uh, to transparent paints and vice versa I'm going to start with a transparent a simple little scene here that we might use as a practice in a practice session um, and the only two colors I've used here are a color called quinacridone gold I could have easily used the um, that's the, these are transparent both of these colors are transparent colors I could easily have used the Indian yellow which is also a transparent yellow but I, in this case I've used trans uh, quinacridone gold and my transparent blue was ultramarine blue now again there are many transparent blues, there are many transparent yellows and golds. Um, there are transparent reds. There are many opaque versions of all the three primary colors and secondary colors. So um, I'm not gonna go through, I'm not gonna try, even try to name all the opaque yellows and all the opaque reds, all the opaque blues, etc. Um, or transparent versions it's a case of you sort of reading and getting familiar and hopefully this will help you make your decision okay so we're starting here as I say with a transparent scene so every color there's only two colors used here this was just a transparent ultramarine blue sky there was a mix between the transparent blue and the quinacridone gold which is transparent to make that little hillside at the back there then I stuck mostly to uh, a clean quinacridone gold for this nearer field area Now the tree itself was just a mix of the two colors in varying degrees so there is that sort of sense of luminosity if you apply enough of both of those colors yes you will block out a certain amount of light um, but there's a couple of very important things to note here before I show you an opaque version of this painting and that is um, and I'll put the two side by side in a moment but um, pay attention to the depth of tone the darker colors the darker areas in this painting okay um, you can achieve darks and lights from uh, transparent colors now this is a, a very 
big decision maker, a, a, a sort of a make or break decision situation. Um, you will not get darks like this by using only opaque colours. If you want darks in opaque colours, you have to add something like a lamp black um, just to get the, dark, the depth of tone. And those dark tones are essential. If I show you this op the, uh, the opaque version next. So this is the opaque version. And I think you'll agree there's an enormous difference uh, between these two. There's, there's a lack of sophistication in the opaque version. There are no darks. You simply can't get darks. My two colors here, again, I've used a blue and a yellow, just as I did in the, op in the transparent version. Um, but my yellow in this case was a color called bismuth yellow. So that's that one there. And um, it's very opaque. And my blue was a color called verdita blue, um, which is a very opaque blue. Um, now, again, there are other opaque yellows and there are other opaque blues. Um, but this is the effect you'll get. And then, as I say, and unless you use, you add a third color like a black, it would have to be something like a lamp black. You, you're never going to get the depth in your paintings by simply using opaque colors. You would have to use either a very dark blue, um, and most dark blues are not trans uh, are not opaque. Uh, very dark blues will be transparent. Or, as I say, you need to perhaps choose um, something like lamp black, which is a sooty sort of black colour. But I think, I hope you'll agree with me. I mean, it, this personal taste must come into this every time, of course. But I'm hoping you'll sort of agree with me here that there's a... There's a lack of sophistication. It always reminds me when I see sort of very opaque looking paintings like this. It always reminds me of my school days when all we were given as, as children was um, was these powder paints, these sort of, uh, um, th they were uh, like poster paints. And they were basically this. They were basically very heavily white pigmented colours. Um, so um, now... I'm going to show you next um, a, a version by where I've used both opaque and transparent. And I'll explain why um, we might choose to use a combination of opaque and transparent. So this is a combination of um, transparent and opaque. Okay. I mean, it, it's a personal taste thing here. You know, um, some of us are going to sort of a, 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 a uh, appreciate this more over this. Um, and there's not a massive difference between this one and this one. Um, you, you know, you've got to factor in other things, and that is the ratio of, 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 of transparency over opaque colours. Um, maybe, you know, on this, um, I, and I'm pretty certain I did, I, I, I probably erred towards more transparent colour than I did the opaque, um, because I, I would have used the opaque probably only in the immediate areas here, in the tree trunk and in some parts of the canopy of the tree itself. The rest of it, the sky, the background mountain, and some of the foreground was transparent. So there was a bias towards a transparent um, uh, color choice here. So what um, what opaque paints can do, um, which perhaps transparents can't do, um, th they're referred to, uh, opaque colors are often referred to as body colors. They give um, a, a certain amount of solidity to an object. They can bring things forward. If you um, uh, you've only got to try out um, a simple exercise. If you used one of my transparent colours or one of your own transparent yellows um, in this tree, um, you could use transparent, semi-transparent burnt sienna in the tree trunk. But if you were to add a little bit of white, um, that's white gouache, which is essentially uh, gu uh, um opaque watercolour. Um, if you were to add that to your burnt sienna, your transparent colour, and paint it into that tree trunk, there would certainly be a sense of that tree trunk having some uh, 
it, it brings it forward. It, there's some proximity. It's solid, you know. Um, so th th there are um, there are arguments for and against the use of of of, um, of opaque colours. Um, and it's uh, and I always sort of I say to people that come to my lessons. Um, it's your choice at the end of the day. I'm a big fan of mixed media, um, using mixed media. I, I probably lean towards mostly transparent colours in my watercolour paints, if it's just purely a watercolour painting that I'm doing. But when I'm um, enjoying a bit of mixed media, um, I will certainly be using... Um, that, that ratio seems to go uh, wherever it wants to go. Sometimes it leans more towards opaque applications and other times it will lean towards transparent colours. So I hope that throws some light on it. So just to sort of, um, just to round that up, um, transparent colours generally dark, light gets through, the light bounces back. Um, opaque colours tend to kill the light from, stop the light from hitting your, your paper. Um, but interestingly enough, it's the transparent colours that we get our darks from. We can only get darks from tra transparent colours which is an interesting little thought because whilst the transparent colours allow light to get through and bounce back at us, they can also, when mixed correctly, um, they can uh, give you the darkest darks where the light's not going to sort of come back at you. So um, I hope that helps, as I say, and, um, and uh, I, I highly recommend that you uh, try these little um, exercises yourself. Take um, just two or three, if you prefer, opaque colours. Um, do a simple painting like this and then do a version of it in uh, transparency and then do a third version again of it in um, the mix, mixing the two as you see, as you just get a feel for it. Um, if you want uh, more in-depth um, uh, information on all these type of uh, skills and techniques in watercolour, then do please pop along to um, my website where you can book yourself into uh, a live lesson that I run on a, uh, a regular basis each month, uh, a couple of times a month, and um, the details will be below. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, and uh, see you at the next one.